finishing up things here on the end zone presented by TiVo. We're in the home stretch. I am Eagle Jason Horwich. Glad to be with you on CBSSports.com and on your TiVo DVR via TiVo Cast. The last of five segments. If you missed anything, you could always watch it on demand. And of course, on CBSSports.com in individual pieces. And uh, I am this last topic about uh, well the running backs because this is not a fantasy segment. But for fantasy users, it has been a terrible season for the most part for your top running backs. It is an upside-down year based on the guys that were good last year compared to the guys that are good this year. Yeah, if you had the number one pick, you had the number two pick, you had the number three pick, or if you had the number four pick, odds are you're not happy right now. And the bottom line is I've never seen this kind of turnover in the NFL from one year to the next where the elite running backs have struggled in the early portion of the season. This is a year ago. LaDainian Tomlinson put together one of the greatest seasons in NFL history. Larry Johnson, huge numbers. And a huge contract now. Frank Gore, you want to talk about a breakout season? He had his breakout season. Tiki Barber ended his career with over 1,650 yards rushing. And Steven Jackson was anointed as the next great running back in the NFL. Well, here we are a year later and... None of those players, and that includes Tiki, who has not rushed for one yard. That's disappointing, (laughs) at least from my perspective. None of those players have lived up to the billing in 2007. And let's break down why here, because LaDainian Tomlinson got off to a slow start last year as well. It wasn't wasn't until, uh, I believe, three weeks into the season that he had 100-yard games, and he had one against Denver last week. So LaDainian Tomlinson, we could see a bounce back. But you go to Larry Johnson. His offensive line is terrible. Yep. With the retirement the last two years of Willie Rofe and Will Shields, that offensive line is just miserable this season. And he's, he's ever, miserable. And he's yeah, I mean he didn't touch it enough early on because he missed a lot of he missed almost he, all of training camp and didn't play in the preseason except for three carries. Then you go to Frank Gore and and his quarterbacks. You were in San Francisco last week. You know how bad the quarterback situation is there. They can gear up on Frank Gore and not worry about anything else. Well, they're putting eight or nine in the box. Every team that he faces, he happened to face one of the fiercest defenses in the NFL last week, the Baltimore Ravens. But Gore, the frustration is building with him. Sat down, spoke with him. I don't think it's frustration based on the fact that he's not getting his numbers. He's a team guy. I think his frustration is based on the fact the team's not playing well. Uh, In talking to Mike Nolan, he said flat out, look, Frank is the kind of guy that would call me if the team's not winning, what more can I do, Coach, to help the team win? If the team's winning and he rushed for 60 yards, Frank's okay with it. Yeah. It's a shame for Frank Gore because he's a young player with a lot of pride, and I think he's beginning to, to see what it's like being an elite running back in this league. When they make you their focus on defense – it's a whole other ball. And game. it's also very tough when the when your offense has no other weapons. Oh no. Because Vernon Davis has been hurt and their wide receiving core, Daryl Jones has right also now. been hurt and, and it's just, it's just battle. not there. You know, maybe we put too much uh, Mike Nolan came out and said we're going to make the playoffs this year. Maybe they put too much expectation on this team. Maybe they were a year away. Let's get to the guys that are uh, on top of the list this year because it's a totally different ball game. And, and not that these guys have been bad running backs in the past. Oh, no, these have been 1,000-yard rushers. They're 1,000-yard yeah, rushers without a doubt, but they're, but they're not in the caliber of LT, Larry Johnson, Frank Gore. Uh, Willie Parker has been running very well this season. He had one bad game at Arizona, but, again, that was just a physical game. Travis Henry, well, he's not going to get to 1,000 yards this year, most likely because he'll most likely be suspended. Willis McGahee, uh, he's just been, you know, pounding it Bruising. out, pounding it out. But yeah. the funny thing about Baltimore is the fact that they're throwing the ball 40 times a game with Steve McNair. If they actually stuck to the normal Baltimore plan, Willis McGahee may actually be at the top of the list. Edron James now with the new offense with Ken Wisenhunt. He's getting more touches than Ronnie Brown. That team is terrible, but he is phenomenal. Right now, Ronnie Brown is the closest thing to LaDainian Tomlinson, maybe even more so than LaDainian Tomlinson. That's the kind of year he's having, not only running the ball, but catching it out of the backfield, turning it upfield, turning screen passes into 45-yard gains. He's leading the NFL right now in total yards from scrimmage. He has been the lone bright spot for Miami on offense so far this season. Uh, He's really having a banner year, and he's living up to the billing of being a number two pick a couple of years ago. As far as the other guys that we just saw, Jason, you know, look, Willie Parker, to me, is going to take that next step into elite status. And we talked about him when they won the Super Bowl, too. I mean, this is not a guy that's coming out of nowhere. No, this is not a under-the-radar guy. not at all. You know, I had a chance to see him play earlier this season against Buffalo. Just a dynamic, dynamic running back. And wouldn't be surprised if he finishes the season number one overall in rushing. You know, the one guy that you are a little bit surprised on this list 
at least in my mind, is, is Edger and James, especially with the fact that they are getting more carries, he is getting more touches, but Arizona has not been able to run the ball of late. And it's because they've got great wide receivers, yep. but they're focusing on that a little bit more now. They are running the football, and Edger's doing a good job. He's he is actually doing a bouncing good job. off tackles, which he didn't do the last and couple And year years. two for him, uh, I don't know about the comfort level a year ago. I think he thought a lot of it was falling on his shoulders and he wasn't getting the opportunities that he believed he should be getting. Now there is a little more balance, yet... I think they've entrusted him a bit more. And sometimes you've got to feed the elite running backs, even if your instinct tells you to throw the ball, just to let them get a feel for the defense and wear on a defense as well. That's been a big difference in year two from year one for Edgerton. The other guy that's not on that list but we want to make mention of is Lamont Jordan yep. because he is leading the league in yards per game, but Oakland had a bye, so he doesn't have the amount of yards that the other guys do. But if it was yards per game, Lamont Jordan would be number one on that list. So he is having a resurgence uh, after having a, an injury-filled 2006. Folks, that's it for the end zone this week as we head into week six. Brian Eagle, I'm Jason Horowitz. We're always on demand on CBSSports.com and on your TiVo DVR via TiVo Cast. Enjoy week six of uh, the football season. We'll get your top stories next week heading into week seven. Take care.